Hey, it's another Victory Monday on Dolphins today. We've got a great show lined up for you. It's Overreaction Monday. We're going to get into everything the Dolphins did right. And I'm already fired up for that Sunday night football showdown coming up against the Eagles. And if you love Dolphins content, guess what? You are in the right place. Subscribe to the channel. We're bringing you daily Dolphins videos, live watch parties like we had on Sunday and like we'll have on Sunday Night Football. It's going to be a heck of a week gearing up for the 5-1 Dolphins against the 5-1 Eagles. So come along for the ride. Subscribe to Dolphins Today, the number one Dolphins community on YouTube. Hey, it wasn't pretty in the first quarter, that's for sure. The Dolphins spotted the Panthers a 14-0 lead. But then they woke up, right? And life was good at Hard Rock Stadium. It's another win. If you missed the game, final score, 42-21. And we had a lot of challenges out there for the Dolphins. And I think they delivered on almost all of them. But as we do every Monday, it's an overreaction Monday, coupled with a little recap. So take a look at the stats right there. Dolphins 42, Panthers 21, 35 unanswered at one point. Tua Tungavalo and the offense were really sharp for the most part. 21 of 31 for 262 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. Remember, that was a huge challenge for this offense was to clean it up a little bit, and I think they delivered and then some. Now, Mike White did throw an interception in garbage time, but we won't let that spoil the offense and the day that they had. Now, Raheem Moster continues to tack on the touchdowns. He is a scoring machine. He now leads the entire National Football League with 11 total touchdowns. He had three of them yesterday, two on the ground and one receiving. And how have I gone this long without mentioning Tyreek Hill? The Cheetahs on a record-setting pace. We're going to dive into more on that, but Man, he's got to be the most electric player in the NFL and the most fun to watch, always giving the crowd a show, which I love, you love. It's what makes this Dolphins team so much fun to watch. But another huge day, 163 yards receiving with the one touchdown on just six receptions. Now, a couple of reactions to get into, but first, what this offense did against the Carolina Panthers continues to be at a historic pace. Remember, we're comparing this Dolphins offense to the greatest show on turf, arguably the greatest offense ever, and I think just maybe by the end of the season, we're going to be talking about the Dolphins as the greatest offense of all time. 424 yards, 6.5 yards per play. Now, the passing numbers, 262, doesn't really jump off the page at you, but again, Tua was very efficient, which you love to see. The offensive line protected him, did not allow a sack, and again, they played that squeaky, queen, clean game that we were looking for. The one interception was in, I don't want to say garbage time, that's disrespectful. We'll call it mop-up time for today's video and they possessed the ball for 29 minutes now the defense didn't do a ton against Carolina in terms of making things difficult on rookie quarterback Bryce Young like we talked about in the preview Bryce Young really looked good in that first quarter when the Panthers went up 14 nothing but the defense made enough plays they got some pressure on him they started to make him a little bit more uncomfortable as the game progressed and when the offense is scoring at will like they were a lot of times this defense is just asked to do enough to allow the offense to excel, which is what they did on Sunday. 188 yards passing for the Panthers when it was all said and done. 108 yards rushing, just 4.3 yards per carry. So again, I'm not overly concerned with what we saw on the defensive end from the Dolphins. The last two weeks between the Giants and the Panthers, two inferior opponents, and really you wanted to see the Dolphins progress take steps forward, which I think they did. And now is the fun part. We get to roll up the sleeves and get ready for a huge game against the Philadelphia Eagles. But we're all human. We've all got the overreactions, right? The slow start. I saw a lot of people in the comments of our post-game video saying it's unacceptable. Then what the Dolphins did was embarrassing in that first quarter. Let's pump the brakes a little bit. Now, Tyreek Hill... Yes, he's electric, but I'm a little bit worried that maybe the NFL is out to get him a little bit. They find him for the Sox. They find him 
for giving the game ball to his mom, and he has taunting penalties. He got a taunting penalty with the flip phone and doing a backflip. I, for one, think it's wildly entertaining, and it's hilarious how the NFL uses the video and then go, is going to go ahead and fine. No official fine yet, but we know that's going to happen. Now, another reaction that I don't even think is necessarily an overreaction, but it's worth noting that offense, we challenged them to play a squeaky clean game. They did. Zero turnovers, zero sacks by the first team offense. Now, again, later in the game, Mike White threw the interception. I hate to keep harping on that, but I don't want anybody looking at a box score and saying, they had one turnover, Jake. You don't know what you're talking about. So the first team offense, zero turnovers, zero sacks allowed, and they looked good. Lastly, a little bit of injury concern. Xavier Howard went out in the second half and did not return. And this team cannot afford to lose Xavier Howard. But I don't know if you've heard or not, but perhaps you have. There's a cornerback waiting in the wings that is ahead of schedule. Now, I'm not minimizing what Xavier Howard brings to this defense. But Jalen Ramsey is a guy in probably with if Xavier Howard misses any time is even more excited to get back. We know he's lipping his licking his chops on that one. So those are the overreactions that I kind of gathered on the World Wide Web over the last 24 hours. And let's start with that slow start. Yeah, it's you, you didn't love to see it, but in my humble opinion, I think it was a little bit, I'll say, predictable. You had the Giants last week. You had the Panthers this week. You you know, it's only human nature to look ahead to that huge game against the Eagles. Now, what would have been unacceptable if they allowed the Panthers to hang around? They clearly didn't. Mike McDaniel, that coaching staff, said the right things and made the correct adjustments after that first quarter, and you rattled off 35 unanswered to cruise to an easy win. So, I'm not necessarily overly concerned. However, when you look at the top of the NFL and you see the Dolphins at 5-1 and one and you see the other teams that are 5-1, and one, right there at the top, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. If you start that slow against these two teams, two of which the Dolphins play in the next three weeks, the Chiefs and the Eagles, they will make your life miserable. The Lions and Niners, Niners can't believe they lost to the Browns, but the Lions look as good as anybody. But point being, if and when this Dolphins team starts playing more difficult competition, you can't afford a slow start with a team like that. So here's how I'm classifying it. I want to know from you first, though, what's your concern level with that slow start? Scale it for me in the comments, 1 through 10. For me, I'm not overly concerned with the slow start. I'll put it at about a three as far as, you know, what that told us in terms of the slow start with the Miami Dolphins against the Panthers. I want it to be seen more as a wake-up call, right? Hey, we can't slow start this slow against a good team. We can afford it against a bad team like the Panthers, but let's wake up and not let it happen. That's how I'm looking at the Dolphins' slow start against the Panthers. So, yes, not great to start that slow, but let it be a wake-up call and avoid it on Sunday night football against the Eagles and moving forward. Now, overreaction number two. Is the NFL out to get Tyreek Hill? I mean, it's ridiculous. The no-fun league strikes again. It struck last week with this Dolphins team. I wish they would just take a step back and realize the Dolphins might be the most exciting team to watch in the NFL, the most exciting part of their product, and relax a little bit. Who is the quarterback that said, re obviously it was Aaron Rodgers, but relax, NFL. Let's stop forcing Tyreek Hill to uh, write these checks for the fines that you're sending out for low socks and taunting and this, that, and the other. Let's understand that this is, this is a generational talent, and this is part of your brand. Your brand is exciting National Football League action on the field, and he's a big part of that. So I'm I'm an, I'm annoyed with the no fun league and how they continue to hone in on Tyree Kill because when you look at the success that he's had, it's really really impressive. He is on a record setting pace, and we're gonna dive into that in a second here. But first, I got to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor. Couldn't do it without him, and we're pumped to have Prize Picks on board. Prize Picks, I've told you about them once, I'll tell you about them again. Far and away, the most exciting and easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. How's it work, Jake? Well, I'm really glad, yes. It's very, very simple. It's simply 
you picking against the projected stats. So none of these complicated Excel spreadsheets, they never really worked anyways. All you're doing is you're taking a game, you're looking at the projected stats, whether it be passing yards, receiving yards, rushing yards, and you're simply picking more or less. You guys know I do it for every Dolphins game. I was all over Tyree Kill having more receiving yards, Tua Tagovailoa having more passing yards. Unfortunately, I had less for Adam Thielen, and he got loose a little bit Sunday, but that's okay. Now, point being, for Monday Night Football, I'm ready to go with my prize picks. It makes every game a lot of fun to watch. I'm picking Justin Herbert to go more than his projected passing total. C.D. Lamb, I'm not all in on him yet. I'm not all in on the Cowboys either, so I'm picking less. And because I'm picking more with Justin Herbert, I'm going to go ahead and add in more receiving yards for Keenan Allen as well. And it's just one more way to make Monday Night Football that much more exciting, playing daily fantasy sports with prize picks. And for being a Dolphin subscriber, we've got a special deal for you at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. You got to use promo code CLNS for 100 dollars in a deposit match and don't worry you know we make it easy on you with that link in the description so go right now make it happen go to pricepicks.com slash clns and use code clns for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars it's price picks it's pricepicks.com slash clns the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports now i want to get to this as far as the Tyreek Hill situation goes. This is from ESPN insider and Dolphins reporter Marcel Luis Jacques talking about Tyreek Hill on his celebration after the long touchdown. He, of course, if you missed it, he grabbed the phone from one of the Dolphins media members, was holding it, did a backflip, which I think is awesome. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. And, of course, the NFL had a problem with it. And here's what he said post game. I know the NFL is going to find me, but it's worth it. That a boy, Tyree Kill, said he's having fun creating these memories while he's doing it. He also went on to expand on that, saying he wants to have memories from when he's playing in the NFL. And what better memory than him scoring a touchdown and doing a backflip on film? So I didn't love that it cost the Dolphins a penalty, 15 yards, but. I'm not overly concerned about it, especially when you consider how well Tyreek Hill has played. He's on a record-setting pace. We talked about this last week. We'll talk about it again because he had another huge game. He leads the NFL with 814 receiving yards. And what's crazy about that is he's 142 yards ahead of the next highest, which is A.J. Brown for the Eagles, who the Dolphins will see on Sunday night. And you know what? It's okay to talk about NFL single-season records when you're on the pace that Tyree Kill is. Recall back to 2012, that's when the Lions' Calvin Johnson received the ball for 1,964 yards. That's the NFL record, and Tyree Kill is certainly on pace for that. He's also, remember, earlier this season he talked about going over the 2,000-yard mark, which had never been done before, and he's on pace to do exactly that. Check out that, 2,306 yards and 17 touchdowns is what he's on pace to do right now. That would be cr a crazy ask, but I don't think it's that crazy. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think Tyreek Hill will break the single season record for receiving yards in the National Football League? You know how it works. Type Y for yes or N for no. Here's how I think about it. I want to just pump the brakes a little bit. And this is more of a message to myself since I'm the one that even brought this up. I'm not, I'm not sure if Dolphins fans are thinking this way or feeling this way, but let's enjoy the witness of witnessing Tyreek Hill and how excellent he's been. And really, we're witnessing greatness here. I don't think there will be a receiver quite like him. And then let it happen organically. If he's close to the record, the final couple of games, we'll, we'll zero in and start talking about that. Remember, he's got one more game than Calvin Johnson did back in 2012 because the NFL now plays 17 games instead of the 16 games. So he's on pace to do it. Let's enjoy it. I think Dolphins fans do enjoy watching him for the most part and aren't really concerned about the record-setting stuff. But, hey, we can have a little fun with it, too. Now, the challenge for the offense against the Carolina Panthers in week number six was to play a squeaky clean game. We said no turnovers. Let's see if they can make that happen. And 
I'm going to say they did it. No disrespect to the second and third team offense that was out there towards the end, but that first team offense did not turn the ball over. Tua was exceptional again. And you got to give a shout out to the offensive line. The offensive line continues to be a bright spot this season. And I don't think it's overstating it to say this Dolphins offense is dictated by the offensive line play. Because we know what Tua can do. We know what Tyreek Hill can do. And heck, we know what Raheem Mostert can do. And it all comes into play when the Dolphins offensive line plays the way they did on Sunday. Zero sacks allowed. Third time that's happened this season. No coincidence. They're 3-0 and in the games in which they do not allow a sack. Also, give a shout out to the entire team, especially the offense on this one. But just three penalties the whole game for the Dolphins. That was a season low. And only one penalty on offense. And <clears throat> Tyreek Hill, if you could not get a taunting penalty after the touchdown, it'd be no penalties by the offense. But I said my piece with that. I love the way Tyreek Hill plays. Just don't want any more taunting penalties. So you take that taunting penalty out, and it is a completely perfect game in terms of no penalties by the offense. So a lot of good news, but unfortunately, as is the nature of the National Football League, the harsh reality, injuries a part of the game. The Dolphins lost cornerback Xavier Howard in the second half to a groin injury, and he didn't return. Now, Mike McDaniel wouldn't really come out right out and say whether or not that was because the game was already in the balance and he didn't need to come back, but we know what Xavier Howard means to this team. And check out this post game from what Mike McDaniel had to say from Barry Jackson. He said, Xavier Howard groin injury will be evaluated. But I love this part because it shows you the type of guy Xavier Howard is. He was smiling post game. He did his post game interviews and he told CBS4, quote, I feel great, feel good. So we'll continue to monitor this situation day by day. You know, only Monday here. I think we got to pump the brakes in terms of trying to proclaim a timeline with it. Mike McDaniel said as much in his media session on Monday as well. But the big thing here is Xavier Howard is a crucial component to this Dolphins secondary. He's a proven veteran in this league, and he's really been one of, if not arguably one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League, four-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro, which is really impressive, and really the leader of the secondary. Remember that loss against Buffalo? He said, I wanted to guard Stephon Diggs. I wanted to be the guy to shut him down. That's the type of mentality that he plays with, and you got to love that. He even led the NFL in interceptions in both 2018 and 2020. He had a nagging groin injury last year. This one is separate than that, so it's not a re-aggravation re of the injury, but we'll continue to monitor the groin situation and here's what Mike McDaniel had to say on the matter as a whole. You know, I think if the game was closer, you know, who knows? I know it's something that we're going to have to evaluate. So the relative severity is kind of up in the air. You guys know me. I like to acquire information before I insinuate. So we'll take a look at it tomorrow and see where we're at from there. So, again, Mike McDaniel kind of having the same temperament that we all share and just taking it day by day. Worth noting the Dolphins cornerback depth chart. If Xavier Howard can't go, you know you've got Cater Kohu and Eli Apple. Both of them have been playing quite a bit. But perhaps, perhaps, Cam Smith, who made his debut on Sunday, again, I'm calling it mop-up time, not garbage time, a little bit more respectful, not that much different, though. But Cam Smith, I mean, he looked like a heat-seeking missile on Sunday. Again, it was late in the fourth quarter in a three-touchdown game, but he came downhill, got his first career NFL tackle. You love to see that. And remember, this is a second-round pick. I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. The Dolphins invested in this guy out of South Carolina, and really people were kind of talking about him as a late first-round pick, too. He tested very well at the Combine. He has the plays to back it up, played in the Power 5 conference. He checks all those boxes. And in a very, very, let me say it one more time, very limited sample size late in mop-up time against the Panthers. I liked what I saw from the guy. I'm not going to lie. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's uh, Vic Fangio and the, the defensive staff should just cut him loose and say, let's see it, rookie. But there's something to be said about letting the rookie prove himself in 
by taking some meaningful snaps. So we'll see if Xavier Howard can't go. And again, I'm getting my ahead of myself. This is all hypothetical here. But it begs the question, who needs to step up as that next cornerback? Eli Apple is the proven veteran. And really, when you think about the corners that have played, you'd put him at cornerback three. And some of that depends on whether they're not in nickel. And Cater Kohu, obviously, he's on the other side. But you want it to be Eli Apple, Cam Smith, or Justin Bethel, who played a little bit more in the first two weeks of the season. Remember, Justin Bethel had that big sack in the game in week one against the Chargers. So let me know in the comments. Hypothetically, again, can't stress that enough, but hypothetically, if, if Xavier Howard can't go against the Eagles, who needs to step up? Type EA for Eli Apple, CS for Cam Smith, or JB for Justin Bethel. Look, if I haven't showed my hand already, I'm going to now. I'm all in. Let's see what the rookies got. Cam Smith, second round pick out of South Carolina. Limited sample size, but I think, you know, you test the waters with the rookie. And maybe, maybe Sunday night football against arguably the best team in the NFC or one of the best teams in the NFC and one of the best wide receivers in the NFC, the wide receiver core for that matter, both A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Both of those guys are pretty dang good. But let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. So I would love to see a little bit more of Cam Smith. I know I'm not alone in that. There's been a lot of discussion about it on message boards, on social media. Dolphins fans want to see what Cam Smith is made of, and I share that sentiment as well. Want to thank everybody for tuning in today, Dolphins today. Always love having everybody on board. If you've had, if you've been with us on our watch parties, you know we have a ton of fun, and we've got the Aqua Club. Your next chance to join the Aqua Club will be Wednesday on our live show. It's a one hundred dollar super chat, and that puts you in the most prestigious club of Dolphins today, the Aqua Club. Shout out to our Aqua Club founding members, Chad Jones, Lord Buddy Bear. David Brecount, and the newest member who joined on Sunday during that blowout win over the Panthers, the one and only Mystical. So who's going to be next to join the Aqua Club? We're building it brick by brick, person by person, one at a time, and we want it you to be next. This could be you. What does an Aqua Club membership gets you, get you? Shout outs on every show because we appreciate the support here at Dolphins Today. Plenty more coming this week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're going to get you ready for that showdown on Sunday night against the Eagles. Until then, have a wonderful day. My name is Jake Ritma, and I can't wait for next time on Dolphins Today. See you.